Today's video is brought to us by Misen. More on them later. I'm sharing three unique salmon recipes in today's video. I'm roasting a really large filet of salmon and from it I'll be creating three creative meals that are delicious and budget friendly. Hello everyone, Jennifer L. Scott here and welcome to The Daily Connoisseur. So I have another what's for dinner video for you today and this time we're focusing on salmon. Now I'm sharing some recipes that are a little different and unique. Maybe you wouldn't have thought to make them with salmon because I think we can all burn out on salmon. We're tired of the salmon filet or the typical glazed salmon recipe that most people make. So today we are going to make salmon quiche, creamy salmon pasta with spinach, and sesame salmon bowls with avocado. So let's jump right in. Okay, let's start by preparing the salmon. So I have a rather large filet of salmon here. I drizzle it with extra virgin olive oil, sprinkle salt and pepper, and then I add lemon slices on top for flavor and also moisture. And I roasted this at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. So when your salmon is finished, just check it to make sure that it's cooked all the way through. And you can flake it off the skin and keep it in an airtight container and use it as you want to throughout the week, or you can make all the recipes at once. It's totally up to you. Let's start off with the salmon quiche, and this is such a delicious recipe. You know how much I love my quiche. So I'm taking my 10 inch Misen nonstick pan and Misen brought us today's video. So we'll talk about them more later, but I'm putting some extra virgin olive oil here and I'm putting some chopped onion and garlic. All of the recipes will be linked in my corresponding blog post down below. Now I'm going to make my very simple olive oil crust. There's only a few ingredients and it's so easy to make. It's a perfect quiche crust. So I have some flour here and I'm adding some salt to that. And then I'm whisking together some extra virgin olive oil and cold water. I believe it's about a quarter cup of each. Then I mix it all together with the flour and the salt and I press this in the bottom of my deep dish pan. And you know me, I'm not the best at making crusts look good, so mine looks rustic, but I think that's perfectly fine. <laughs> Now I'm going to take about a fourth of the salmon that I cooked and flake that off the skin and I will be using this in this quiche. So this is what my crust looks like after pressing it into the bottom of my pan. And on top of this, I'm adding the onions which have caramelized nicely. So those are the onions, garlic, and then I'm adding the salmon on top. Keep in mind the salmon was already cooked. On top of that, I am adding some cheese. You could use whatever cheese you like. This is an Italian blend of shredded cheese. You could use Swiss cheese here. That would be good too. And then on top of this, I'm adding some sliced tomatoes. And now I'm going to whisk five eggs together. Put some salt and pepper with that. And add about two cups of half and half. You could use heavy cream if you want, but half and half works well here too. And I add some freshly chopped parsley. and pour that all over the deep dish pie. I add a little bit more cheese on top and then I bake this in the oven at 350 degrees for about an hour. You will want to check it, of course. I think I went a bit over like an hour and 10 minutes, hour and 15 minutes, but you want it to be nice and brown. And this is such a delicious 
quiche. The flavors are so good. The crust is really thin but flavorful as well. And right here I'm serving it with a side salad with some croutons, tomatoes, and I believe the dressing is a cilantro lime dressing. So this is delicious. I also like making these and having them for breakfast the next day. So let's say you love quiche, but your family's not the biggest fan. Sometimes little children don't like quiche as much. You could still make it, have one for dinner, and then you could have the leftovers for breakfast for the next few days. Sometimes that's what I do. Next, let's look at the creamy angel hair salmon pasta. So I'm going to take some angel hair pasta and boil that on the stove according to the package directions. But keep in mind, we're going to do something with the spinach and the pasta. So we'll get to that in just a second. And now in my mise en nonstick pan, I saute some onions. And this is very depressing, but I had roasted garlic in the oven specifically for this recipe. And you know, that takes a while, like 50 minutes. It was so good and flavorful, but I left it in the aluminum foil pouch and I don't know if I did this or someone else did it, but we threw it away. <laughs> so I was like, no, if you have roasted garlic, add it to this because it's really good. Okay. So into my sauteed onions, I'm adding some heavy cream and I believe it was about a cup and a half of heavy cream and some white wine. You could always use chicken broth if you don't want to use wine. And I'm adding some capers here as well. The zest of one lemon and then I also squeeze half a lemon into the sauce and then the other half I squeezed on top uh, of the finished pasta and then I sprinkle some parsley salt and pepper and mix this keep this on low heat but just allow it to thicken up it's a really good cream sauce you'll notice that I do a variation on this type of sauce a lot and I feel like once you get the basic bones of a cream sauce like this you could play with it and it's a really delicious alternative to marinara then I'm going to add in some flaked salmon so I'm probably doing another third of the salmon that I had already cooked and that makes this go really quickly Meanwhile, I have about a minute left for my pasta to be done and what I do is I put a lot of spinach into the boiling water. So sometimes it's tricky when you have spinach because it's so big and then it cooks down so much. So if you have a smaller frying pan, this is a good way to cook the spinach is just put it in the last minute and it will wilt obviously in the boiling water. And then that was finished so I just drain it in the sink and the spinach comes right out with the pasta. So that's one of my tricks. Then I add the creamy salmon sauce to the pasta and I mix it all around. And this is what it looks like served up. This is so good. Everybody in the family loves this recipe. We all love spinach. I top it with some Italian cheese and I serve it with some garlic bread that's toasted. This is an absolutely delicious way to enjoy salmon. And as you can see, we're making that, that filet stretch because we're adding a lot of things to it. So this is definitely a keeper. I'm going to break away for one minute to tell you about Misen, who have kindly sponsored today's video. So Misen's 10 inch nonstick pan is the essential cookware piece that you need in your kitchen. Their average customer rating is 4.9 out of five stars and is half the price of other high end cookware without the harsh chemicals. Most nonstick pans are either cheap and lose their nonstick coating quickly or they cost over $100 and they still only last a few years before they start sticking. Misen created something different, the Misen nonstick system, which combines the highest quality and safest nonstick surface with a unique plasma primer that helps the nonstick perform better than pans that cost over $130 at a fraction of the price. Misen's nonstick pan is already half the price of other premium cookware, and now they're giving you an extra 20% off site-wide plus free shipping on orders of $75 and more when you click my link and use my code down below. So thank you so much to Misen for bringing us today's video.
Now for the final recipe, we're going to make sesame salmon bowls. These are so good, perfect for lunch. So I'm going to take the remaining salmon that I have. This is all we have left from that big filet. And I'm going to put this dressing and marinade on it. It's my favorite, it's by Yo Mama's. It's the sesame one. But if you don't have this, just use your favorite sesame marinade or you could do teriyaki here. That would be really good too. So I'm going to cover the fish with that sauce. Then in the bottom of my bowl, I'm putting some rice, that's bone broth, sea salt rice, at the very bottom. Use whatever rice you like. And on top of this, I'm going to layer everything so it looks really pretty. So I layer the sesame salmon. And then next, I put some sliced avocado. And some sliced mango. cucumber some chopped carrots and some sweet peas now you know me I always have green onions and for some reason I did not have green onions I cannot believe this so green onions would have been perfect on top of this but I drizzle a little bit extra sesame marinade and then I sprinkle sesame seeds on top and that's it. This bowl is light and refreshing. I highly recommend adding the mango or maybe some other fruit because that sweetness combined with the crunchiness of the vegetables and then the creaminess of the avocado and the salmon is just perfect. This is a bit of a take on a poke bowl, but of course the salmon is fully cooked. So I hope that this gives you a good idea for lunch because this is so easy to prepare. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you got some good salmon ideas. Let us know what your favorite way to cook salmon is in the comment section down below. And thank you to Mizen for bringing us today's video. Don't forget to use my link and code and you could get an extra 20% off site-wide plus free shipping on orders over $75. Thanks so much for joining me today. Keep calm and remain classy and keep cooking. And I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.